Hi friends, so I came across this incredible uh, um, little ad that has been released um, by somebody who is running for an election in their new, the new right party in Israel. And um, her name is, uh, she's the current Israeli Justice Minister, Ayelet Shaked. If you didn't know that it was uh, real, you would think it was some sort of satire or some sort of, you know, Saturday Night Live um, sort of satire or something or the onion um, and this kind of gives you an idea of where um, where the party um, where parties in Israel are moving like it's in this apartheid state of Israel that they're moving more and more to the right and um, uh, somebody asked her uh, Ayelet Shaked um, about the Likud party and I don't think that she thinks that the Likud party is is right-wing enough well that's like saying you know, and she reckons that that's why, you know, her party, one of the reasons her party is important, the New Right Party. And saying, saying that the Likud party, um, headed by Bibi Netanyahu, who is going to be up for corruption charges, or uh, he's up for corruption and, uh, you know, that's not looking good for him. But to say that the Likud party is um, sort of not, not, not uh, right-wing enough is like saying the Dead Sea needs more salt. I mean, that's how ridiculous that is. And I want to give you an idea of, um, so I'll show you this, I'll show you this ad, and then I'll show you this election ad, ad by Ayelet Shaked, and then, and then I just want to talk a little bit about her. I'm not going to spend that much time on her, but this gives you an idea of the direction these parties in apartheid Israel are going. Fascism. 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 לי זה מריח כמו דמוקרטיה. Okay, so isn't that an interesting little uh, little ad for her? Uh, it's sort of amazing, really. I couldn't quite believe it. But anyway, um, and other people couldn't believe it as well. For example, I'm not even sure uh, what, you know, uh, fascism smells like democracy to me <laughs> is even supposed to mean. I guess she sort of feels like, you know, to be ultra right wing, that's what the sort of democracy that Israel really needs, you know, sort of fascism, that's what you need to sort of basically stamp out Palestinians once and for all. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm thinking that's probably what, what's underneath it. But anyway, um, somebody said um, on, on Twitter, um, Barack Ravid said, um, March 18th, he said, this is one of the most bizarre election ads um, you have ever seen. Israel's Minister, Minister for Justice, Ayelet Shaked, plays a model sprays herself with fascism perfume and says, smells like democracy to me. Victor Orban on stero steroids. And apparently in her, um, as she's whispering in, the, in this ad, she um, is whispering things in Hebrew like judicial reform, separation of powers, and restraining the Supreme Court. Issues, issues which she's made central to her election campaign. I think the elections are coming up in April this year, 2019. The editor of the um, the editor of the Jerusalem Post, uh, um, Lahav Hakov, said that uh, it. He said in defense of this ad, it's really a, it's really it's it's a really tone deaf ad, but most of the descriptions I'm seeing in English are pretending it's a defense of fascism when it's not. She's clearly saying she's accused of fascism, but that the politics listed in the ad, which most would be translated skip, are democratic. Uh, Lahav Hakov, senior contributing editor at the, um, yeah, anyway, that's, that's what he said. Um, well, I, I've heard her speak, I've watched a number of interviews with, um, um, with this woman, this justice minister, and um, she's really quite frightening. And I'll just give, I, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm gonna, just going to give you an idea of uh, really where she is on uh, the Palestinians who, who live in Israel. Who, who live on occupied land. Um, 
I'll, I'll just give you an idea of what she says about Palestinians. This is something she said once. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when it was, um, but it's in recent times. They have to die and their houses should be demolished so that they cannot bear any more terrorists. Palestinians are all our enemies and their, bloods, their blood should be on our hands. This also applies to the mothers of the dead terrorists. So she's basically calling children dead terrorists. So she's charming. That might seem extreme if you don't know much about how far gone uh, many, many Israelis are in, uh, in relation to their genocidal calls for the, uh, for, for the killing of Palestinians. They openly do that. A lot of um, Israelis, it's really far gone. That's why the BDS campaign is so important because we cannot expect any sort of change from within Israel. And a lot of politicians have this absolute loathing and want to, want to wipe out Palestinians, I think, and definitely people like her. I mean, the Likud party does its best to try and wipe out Palestinians. Now, I'm not going to get into that whole thing, uh, except that, you know, even the Likud party that she says is not really right wing enough. That's what she, I don't think she's outright said that, but I think that's pretty much what she believes. The yeah, Likud party, um, you know, the Netanyahu is, I posted this um, meme a few times now, but I think it expresses the position of the current party in, in office right now. Netanyahu said, you know, that basically Israel is a Jewish state and other people don't matter. That's basically what he said. Um, so, you know, and I'm going, just going to read you some uh, statistics from the UNRWA. Um, and it says, uh, I'm just going to read you some statistics from there. It says, uh, it classifies Palestinian refugees as those who left Israel in 1948, those who left the West Bank and Gaza Strip in 1967, those who were abroad, those who were abroad but were subsequently not allowed to return to Israel and all of their descendants according, all of their descendants. According to UNRA, this totals 5 million Palestinian refugees. The UNRWA statistics include those residing in Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, the West Bank, and Gaza Strip. So there's actually a lot of refugees from, um, that have left, Palestinian refugees that have left and, um, you know, and it, this whole thing about being a Jewish state and none, no other people matter is just, that's a really scary ethno-supremacist position. And that's why it's an apartheid state. It's not a, it's not an exaggeration to call it that. And that's why the BDS campaign is so important. Rania Kalek said of that particular election ad by um, Ayelet Shaked, Rania said, in Israel, fascism is sexy. Is that really the message? I can't, I don't, what? And a question mark. Granted, this is the same lady who endorsed a, a call to kill Palestinian mothers in their beds to prevent them from birthing little snakes. Now, um, she actually used that word, little snakes. Um, so she's actually denied that she said that, but it's, um, I think that's actually been proven to be something that she said. She said. Uh, she's, she's actually, den she denies a lot of things that she said, even when it's proof. Like, for example, her husband is a, in the Air Force and um, somebody said to him, oh, you know, something about it must be good to, it must be, uh, he must be up there pounding the Arabs or something, you know, in his plane. It, you know, something to the effect of, does that feel good or something to her? And she said, yes, something like that, you know. I mean, she has an absolute hatred, a genocidal hatred for Palestinians. And she's the justice minister in Israel. You know, I mean, wowza is what all I can say to that. Um, so, so anyway, um, Twitter said, I'm afraid it looks like, it looks very much like she's saying that that which our enemies label as fascism, I call democracy. That's sort of, you know, what I, I took from it really, knowing their history and everything, um, knowing the history of um, right-wing politicians there, they would see that as democracy. They see wiping out Palestinians from, from their midst is uh, the best thing they can do for, for the, their country, or what they consider their country. They want a, you know, an ethno, they're an ethno-supremacist state. Uh, and just to, to note you know, that she, she's another sort of right-wing politician that just blatantly lies in interviews and you cannot get a straight answer from her like he pointed out uh, the interviewer pointed out that one in ten settlers get um, prosecuted for basically um, you know doing illegal settlements on top of Palestinian land and bulldozing homes and the state the Israeli government actually helps settlers 
do that. They actually help um, Israeli settlers do illegal settlements, bulldoze homes. They protect them when they do it, and they even set them up there with you know a whole lot of um, infrastructure and stuff so that they can do it. And the UN has been um, ruling that these uh, re resolution after re resolution saying that this is illegal to do it, but they keep doing it and they keep bulldozing Palestinian homes. It's it's absolutely heartbreaking to watch. Um, in fact, you may be familiar with uh, the American Rachel Corey who tried to stop a bulldozer in 2003, I think it was, from bulldozing. It was 2003 or 2006, I'm sorry. Uh, Rachel Corey tried to stop a bulldozer from bulldozing a Palestinian home and uh, she was crushed underneath the blade and they actually sort of, uh, they actually intentionally did it. They actually intentionally ran over her and she died. Um, and, and that's sort of what they, they've been doing for a very long time against uh, many UN resolutions that it is illegal to do that. And so Mehdi Hassan uh, sort of challenged her on that and she tried to gloss over it, I mean challenged her on the bulldozing of Palestinian homes and the illegal settle settling of it on top of Palestinian land, Palestinians' homes, etc. And she just tried to gloss over it. And that's the thing. There is no justice in Israel for Palestinians. They're seen, they have the same, same status in many ways you could say as uh, non-human animals. And you know I'm vegan. I'm against the property status of animals. That's why I'm vegan. I don't believe that sentient animals, I don't believe that sentient animals, human or non-human, should be considered property. Um, and I don't, certainly don't think that, um, and I certainly think that Palestinians are treated in a way that is, is pretty much just like animals are treated, which is completely wrong. It's wrong what we do to animals, that's why I'm vegan, and it's wrong what we're doing to Palestinians. They're people, human beings, and they des deserve the right, uh, equal rights, just like Israelis have in that country. So, and they're not. They're executed at the fence. Um, 189 people have been executed at the fence of the open-air prison that is Gaza, where many, two million Palestinian refugees are living in this open-air fence, uh, open-air prison. Uh, and uh, it's, they have, um, they have uh, dirty water there. They have um, uh, electricity that comes and goes. They have like four hours of electricity that they can use. They treat them like, you know, there's a blockade of Gaza, um, you know, and then the West Bank, the, the Palestinians there are treated appallingly too. It's just awful. And I invite you to check out the Empire Files. They've done about seven programs on Palestine. Sorry, I'm squinting. It's, I've got the sun in my face. It wasn't there when I sat down. Um, sorry about that. So, um, yeah, so watch the Empire Files. They've done about seven great programs on that. And I'll leave a link to that in the information section. The Empire Files with Abby Martin. And, uh, yeah, so, um, you know, the, the Palestinians are treated like they're literally like they're vermin. I mean, seriously, the, the Israelis, uh, many Israelis, and they openly, a lot of Israelis openly call for the genocide, genocidal um, murder, basically, the wiping out of Palestinians. Uh, and, um, and the government, the current government is, you know, trying to wipe them out. And this has been going on for decades now, since the Nakba, since the Nakba, since the 19... 48. And the Great March of Return, where there's uh, unarmed protesters at the Great March of Return. The snipers are executing them with live bullets, and they've killed 189, as I mentioned, and they have, um, there's 6,000 plus they have injured with live bullets, live ammunition. So, you know, that's the state of Israel, and that's why even, there's been even uh, people that have, like, um, I'm going to play some, some Mehdi Hassan has mentioned a few public figures in Israel who have said that it's time for Israel to address its racism problem. So you say serious effort. You say serious yes, effort, Mishaket. Serious effort. Yuval Diskin, Yuval Diskin, who I'm sure you know, former head of Shin Bet, no dove him. He said in August, anarchistic, anti-state, violent and racist ideologies have been forming in Israel over the years and they are treated tolerantly by the Israeli legal and judicial system. That's the former head of Israeli this, Secret this Service. Is, this is totally not true. As but I he's said, the former head of Shin Bet. Very, Surely he knows more is, than you and do. And I am the justice minister and I'm, With respect, I'm telling you... You've been justice minister is, for six months. He is, was head of Shin Bet for the six the years. Is, you are not giving, you are not letting me finish. We'll deal there with this quote. Tens, 20 minorities of extremes 
Jewish who are acting in violence, they will be arrested. Uh, and he says Israel they are. He says they've been tolerated by the Israeli government. It's possible. It's totally not true. The Israeli you government is doing You should really talk to the head of former head of Israeli security who says you're wrong. To you don't agree with Yuval Diskin, clearly. You say he's wrong. Let me no, ask you. I don't. Okay, well, let me ask you about the president of your country, the Israeli president, Reuven Rivlin, who said it's time to honestly admit that Israeli society is sick and it's our duty to treat this disease of racism, of xenophobia. Is he wrong as because well? Because we are, we are fighting, we are fighting the minorities in Israel who are racist, but the Palestinian Authority doesn't. The Palestinian Authority Okay, with respect, I'm not asking them. about the Palestinian Authority. You're the, not Palestinian. But, I'm asking but about I Israel. Want to tell you, of course Israel, you want to talk about I'm the Palestinians. I'm, I'm asking you about the Israeli president. Israel, he says your society I'm, is sick. I'm proud. I'm proud in what my government is doing in so order to secure... So is the president wrong? Is the president every, of Israel wrong? No, the president knows exactly that we are doing all the right steps in order to ensure that no violence will be occurred, no matter if you are a Jewish or if you are a Muslim. And we have a law in Israel, according to the law, everyone okay. is equal. It's and good to are, hear you say that. But in, according that. It's good to hear you say that. Um, before we finish, uh, in the middle of last summer's Gaza conflict, as Israeli forces killed, I think, 500 Palestinian children, according to the UN, you posted an article on your Facebook page. You shared an article which referred to the entire Palestinian people as the enemy. It referred to Palestinian no, children. Me, Hold on, let me finish my question, and then you can answer. Let me finish my question, and then you can answer. Well, you're, well, you're no, not letting me ask a question. Let me be, you let me it be referred very to Palestinian clear. children as little this snakes. Post, Is that no, not a call for genocide, for child murder? It just it's just not true. It's a totally lie. And I think and no many, the Palestinians scared. would argue no one cares about their deaths, uh, which are more numerous. One last question. No, you, one last course, question. Then you say, we do. Okay, believe well, me, we want to live. We want to live in peace in the Middle East. Israel is never, never sick for a war. We all We're care. You're live. here as an Israeli We're minister, so I'm asking you about your actions and your words. Let me ask one last question. I know you have to run. Let me ask you one last question. Your husband's an Air Force pilot, and in a TV interview you did in 2012, you were asked, when your husband, the pilot, when he's up in the air, do you hope he'll be pounding the Arabs hard with bombs? You laughed and said yes. Many would say you no, seem to no, get a no, thrill no. out I'm of not killing talking, Arabs. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about my husband. Is not relevant to this interview. But you did laugh and say I, yes I can, when you no, were asked that question. No, no, no. It was on I'm Channel 2 of Israeli television. I'm not talking about my husband. I can tell you I'm not you asking about my husband. I'm asking about you. Israel, When Israel, you were asked about Arabs I'm, being pounded with bombs, did you laugh and say yes as I'm, you did on no, Channel 2 I'm television? Not talking about, I'm not talking about my husband. This is my pri this is a, pri is a private man. I so that's really all I wanted to show you. I just wanted to give you a little snippet into the psyche of um, one of the many right-wing politicians there as Israel lurches further and further to the right, which is so hard to imagine. I mean, um, it's so hard to imagine even with this current Likud party that a party could be more right than that, but it's going further and further that way. And it's really scary. It is, it is fascism. It is, uh, it is sort of appalling. And that's why the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement is so important because we cannot expect any ch real change coming from within Israel because they are really too far gone. There are good people in Israel, but basically they're so far gone. They've been brought up with this terrible racist position towards Palestinians. And I don't think any change can come from within at this point. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. So my name is Trish Roberts. Please uh, click the like button if you like the content. Please leave comments if you wish to and um, links to anything that you think might be of, uh, of interest in relation to this um, and also avoid any anti-semitic comments uh, i don't tolerate islamophobia or anti-semitism or homophobia or transphobia and so forth racism and all of that i i reject any discrimination that otherizes a group so um and uh please uh, you know subscribe and click the notifications bell um to to receive updates okay so thanks so much for watching till next time bye for now